Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at phasers for inductors or the phaser diagram associated with inductors. So if you take a look at the phaser diagram right away you realize that something is different here with inductors relative to resistors. Notice that the direction of the arrow representing the voltage across the inductor is different from the direction for the current. Matter of fact, there's a 90 degree difference between them, and we can see that in this case, the voltage is ahead of the current, so what we say is that the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees, or we can say that the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. Now, again, these two phasers, the voltage and the current phaser, will rotate as time goes by, but this is a snapshot picture at time equals zero. You can see that there's a phase angle between the real axis and the current by phi, and then you can see that the phase angle between the real axis and the voltage will be phi plus 90 degrees. So keep that in mind as we look at the rest of the diagrams here. Notice that here we have a simple, uh, a simple diagram for the inductor. We have a current flowing through the inductor, and notice that the current is a function of time. It has a maximum value times the cosine of omega t plus phi. That's the general equation of a current of time varying current. Notice here again on the diagram that the red line here represents the current, which is in tune with this equation right here, although on the diagram here we let the phase angle go to zero. And then we can see here that there's a phase difference for the voltage. The voltage actually leads the current by 90 degrees, which basically shifts the, the uh, diagram to the left of the voltage relative to the vertical axis. If we now take the derivative of the current with respect to time, we get the voltage. The voltage as with respect to time is equal to the inductance times di dt. If we now take the derivative of this, we get minus, of course the L is already there, minus because the derivative of cosine is the negative sign, so we get minus the sine times the derivative of the angle which is omega, so we end up with minus L i max omega times the sine of omega t. If we now want to convert that back to the cosine, which is what we typically do, all we have to do is change the sine in front and add another 90 degree phase difference because we know that the, current, the voltage here uh, leads the current by 90 degrees. We add 90 degrees to that, change the sine, and that gives us now an equation for the voltage across the inductor as, as a function of time. But this is in the time domain. If we now want to convert that to the frequency domain or the phaser domain, notice what happens. The voltage will now be defined as j omega l times i. Where did that come from? Well, if we transform the voltage to the phaser mode or the phaser domain, we can see now that the voltage is going to be equal to omega l i m, and this can be represented in the exponential format e to the j times the angle, the phase angle, plus 90 degrees, because it's now the entire phase angle. If we now separate those two, we can write e to the j times phase angle phi plus 90 degrees as two separate uh, factors right here. And then notice, since the maximum current value times e to the j phi is equal to the phasor representation of i, which is this right here, and e to the j times 90 degrees, well, that's simply equal to j, the imaginary, imaginary number j. So if we, multi if we replace this by j, and this by, or I max times this, so this quantity right here, if we take this and convert that to the phasor I, and we take this and convert to J, and we plug that in, we now have a equivalent for the voltage in the frequency domain, or the phasor domain, that is equal to omega L, and instead of I max, we're gonna write I max times this, of course, we're gonna write I, which is the phasor I, times J, which comes, of course, from this last component right there. And so in essence, we can say that V, because typically they, write, they like to write the J first. I'd like to write the J last, but most textbooks like to write it first. So we write J times omega L times I. And so this is the relationship of the voltage in the frequency domain as a function of the current in the frequency domain. You can see the relationship is that V is equal to J omega L times I. Why is it like that? Well, notice that if you send the current through the inductor, the inductor first opposes any change in the current, and since the current is always changing, the inductor holds back that change, the voltage reading across goes to high immediately, and then as the current begins to flow through the inductor, 
then the inductor offers less and less of opposition to the change of the current. When the current reaches a maximum value, the current no longer changes, the voltage across the inductor will be zero, and the current through the inductor will be a maximum. And so that's why there's this phase difference across an inductor between the voltage and the current. So what do we need to remember? We have a current through the circuit. We can calculate the voltage as a function of time, which is simply L times di dt. We then take that expression and convert the sine function back to a cosine function by changing the sine and adding a 90 degree phase difference. We can then take this and transform that into the phasor domain or the frequency domain as we call it. All we have to do then is take this component right here, the cosine of omega t plus phi plus 90 degrees, and write it as an exponential function. The exponential function, we can split this apart into a product of these two. We then recognize that the maximum current times e to the j phi is simply the phasor for the current, and e to the j times 90 degrees is simply the imaginary j. It's simply one times a 90 degree rotation, which puts it into an imaginary axis direction, which of course gives you the imaginary number. If we then replace this by j, and this quantity here by the phasor i, which is this phasor i right there, we now have an expression for the phasor representation of the voltage, which is simply now equal to j times omega li. Omega, of course, is the angular frequency of the current and the voltage. L is the inductance, and i is the phasor current, the phasor representation of the current. And that is what we have to remember for the phasor diagram for inductors.